like a Lucid Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash Reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Lucid Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash Reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Hello there folks, today we'll take a look at the game called World Wars. It's published by Floodgate Games and the designer is John Gilmer. And in this game, you are, you are aspiring heroes. Uh, you are going through different walls and there is the auctions of those walls. Maybe some of the, the, the owners of those walls have abandoned them or have died a glorious death as heroes in battles and such. So anyway, you want to get shiny items and you get them from walls, but you need to go through the auction and win those auctions and become the richest and with the best collection out there. So let's take a look at how the game works. So the World Wars revolves around those wall cards uh, where you will have auctions in order to get the items and from the items you get points at the end of the game and you can also sell them for more money. And how the game works, basically at the beginning of the game each player will get, uh, let's say we're gonna play a four player game then each player will get four uh, walls here. Now each player will secretly choose one of the walls and then you will all simultaneously reveal them and then based on the initiative number right here who has the lowest number will play their world first and will become the auction master and all the other players will be the auctioners and will bid on that stuff and such and you will try to get the cards so let's take a look at those walls first so the initiative number here this number says how many items are in this vault and this one says how many you will reveal and let's say here for example you will reveal one and here you will reveal one and one and five five so and this is at how many cards you can pick um, the, the other players can pick basically at one card or more cards and some of them have the winner ability some of them so the winner ability as well some of them have any other like special requirements abilities and such so Basically, for example, with this one, after looking at the items, you may exchange them for the top four cards of the item deck, then shuffle the item deck. You may not look at the new cards before setting the opening bid. So basically, the gambler's den. So how does it go? Let's say, let's say uh, you all chose those first vaults simultaneously. The other vaults will be for the next rounds. And then you will reveal it. And let's say it's your turn. It's your initiative. You'll put it out. So it says they need to take four cards. So you take them, the, as an auction master, you take them, those four cards, you don't show them to anyone. Some of the cards might be junk, which is not worth anything. Uh, but some of the in-game scorings are good with junk, maybe, because you can score extra points with that. But usually, yeah, the junk isn't worth anything. And then you have some really cool stuff. For example, the ruby is basically all about collecting it, and you get more points if you get more of the, if you get five, four rupee, then you get 16 points a total, you see. So, and some of them are artifacts or, or weapons or the other ones that you can equip as well. And when you equip stuff, you don't get points at the end of the game for that stuff, but you will get the special ability of that thing right here. So you will take a look at all those four cards. Within this world, um, it says that you don't reveal any of the cards, but if there would be a number here in the yellow, then you would reveal one of the cards and you pick a card that say maybe you want to reveal a ruby. You're gonna say, oh guys, you know that there's a ruby in this vault. So you're gonna wanna encourage people to bid on that more. So but let's say in this this matter there's there's nothing here. And then you look in those cards like mm, maybe I'll do the gambler then and then I'm gonna discard those like the uh, special ability of this world says or special instructions of this world says you can exchange the four cards for the top cards of the deck for more but you cannot look at them let's say we're gonna play this this way right now i cannot look at them now starting from you as a auction master 
you will place a starting beat. You cannot outbeat, you cannot, you basically, you cannot go higher. Your starting beat is your final beat. So if I really, as an auction master, I really want those cards myself, I must beat higher. Let's say I'm gonna put a 10. Sometimes you wanna bluff as well, that, that might be true. So let's say I'm gonna put 10. So the next player can outbeat, let's say 11 or 12, something like that. Let's say, let's say it's 11. Now, if at least somebody will outbeat you, then you're out of the game, so you cannot claim the cards because you cannot beat further. Your first beat is basically your, your last beat. And then whoever beats the most will give that money to the auction master. So you as an auction master will receive. So why you want the other players to beat a lot? Because you will receive that money for the later turns where you will use it to bid for the other worlds as well. So somebody beats uh, 12 and they will give you 12 gold and then we'll get those cards. And this world is done. And they will look at those cards and wow, and that's so bad. I was a gambler's den, junk, nothing. But they have a poker face, they're like, oh, I got some really cool cards, you know. And then the second player, like it's a four player game, then the second player will, will basically go with, uh, with his or her vault, and then you will uh, do the same things. And the, the, the other player will be the auction master. He will, here he will pick five cards, one, two, three, four, five. Then he will take a look at those cards and uh, he will take a look at those and see, let's say maybe he sees that, he sees secretly that there is a lot of junk. But maybe if he will reveal Emerald, people will start bidding a lot. So there is one, because the yellow number says here one, the auction master must reveal one card. So he re reveals Emerald, kind of hinting towards that, you know, there's some good stuff in this world. And then those cards are shuffled. And this number right here is a peak number, which means that every player will pick at the random two cards from the cards that are still left in the world. So the the other player will take a look at maybe those two cards and he will look at those. Uh, I'm not really going to want to beat on those, uh, you know. Or, and then the other player will pick at the other two cards, maybe those two cards here. Uh, not so good, you know. That, that's the whole thing. And then you start bidding this, the same way. So the auction master places a first bid and then the other players will then outbid each other how they want. Until in a four-player game, all four vaults are gone, then the, the, the first four, four vaults. Then you have the phase which is called basically you can equip uh, items, you can sell items. So let's say I had all of those cards after all those auctions, I have all of those cards. So the junk is worth nothing, but I can keep junk as a store for uh, when there are storage fees, I can keep junk for three junk for one. Maybe I want to keep junk, I don't know why, but usually you can just uh, discard, you can just throw away the junk from your piles. But with the other items, uh, you can equip them. So th this one cannot be equipped, uh, but you can sell it for four money. Or you can keep it for the end of the game in order to get two points. And you will keep it in your uh, personal stash. Let's say I'm going to keep both of those. I don't want to sell this for four if I can get two points in the end of the game. And then there will be a new round. So then you will choose your four vaults again, you know, like the one vault each. And then you will do auctions more and more and more until you get some cards into your stash, basically. And then at the end of the game, you will take a look at how many points you have. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, as I told you, some of the items, so basically when you sell, you sell it for that value. When you sell, you basically want to get money for, for the future auctions so you can at least bid for something. And as I told you, some of those cards are the collecting diamonds and rubies and such. Some of those cards are like Dragon Egg, for example. Those, there are only three copies of that card in the deck. And if you get, if you get um, three of them, you get 18 points. But if you get one or two of them, you get minus points. So it's like a gamble thing here. Uh, there are also the other cards. Uh, as I told you, you can also equip some cards, for example, with this equipment. Uh, before bidding, you may pay the auction master one to pick at two items from all items in the world. 
uh, equip selling sell two weapon uh, sell weapons for plus two each really good some um, some of them let's say where is it um, for example as you can see so if you sell shield with helm or chest plate, you get eight so you, you kind of get more if you sell it separately you get only two money but if you sell it with uh, helm or chest plate or if you sell it with helm and chest plate you get even more money so if you sell it as a kind of a complete set then you will get more money and all the other stuff that you can equip that you can buy sell and such and there is lots of junk as well so that's that you go through all the walls who has the most points the winner if you don't have enough money during the game you can go to the loan shark and get 12 money but you will get the loan token uh, these are these tokens and the, at the end of the game this is basically like a corruption the more you have it the more minus points you will get also at the beginning of the game you would get two of those end game conditions right here so this will give you points based on whatever you have in your vault or or something else for example for each weapon item that you have in your vault sorry in your uh, in your storage you will get extra points so you will get two of those at the end of the game you will choose only one that will score for you basically the, the one that's most beneficial and then you will score those points also i can tell you that at the end of each kind of round uh, you will pay storage fees for each card that you have in your storage one two three four five six let's say i had six cards you have to pay one gold if you cannot pay you um, either go like you either have to low money or or you just discard cards from your storage so that's the cool part that you need to keep up with the storage fees as well and all the difference uh, those walls i'm gonna show you for a moment here is that for example a small chest after drawing items you must add one item from your item pile to this vault items <laughs> that's bad um or this one four items uh, reveal one pick at two you may set aside any number of junk cards from this world face up and draw back up to four items then shuffle the junk cards you set aside into the item deck you may only do this at once okay so you can uh, can, can get rid of the junk cards inside this world before bidding select one item card from this world and shuffle it into the item deck so you kind of get rid of one of the cards maybe a good one maybe maybe a bad one or let's say this is a lot you know five two and a peak is you choose which items cards each player picks at so you kind of have those different variabilities and how the auctions and how the peakings and how the revealings proceed so which is really cool and that's the whole game of world wars so world wars first of all components artwork as always the art is really really cool i like the art very much i like the theme very much the theme of this one is i i really like to watch the storage wars the uh, the ones where they you, you know about storage wars if you don't know just google storage wars um it's a tv series so it's really really cool and um, this game is kind of based on that but it's in a fantasy world and it's uh, world wars and i do like this concept and that's where my liking of the theme and the game is coming from as well so, but the box is really cool. I like the box. It's magnetic. It's small, which I like as well. It's a card game. Everything fits here. And yeah, and it's just really cool. You can take it with you anywhere. It's not heavy and such. So that's really cool. The components, the cards are fine. Okay, quality. Uh, then I have sleeve. I have sleeved them because lots of handling. Uh, and then um, there's also tokens, which are fine as well. Two millimeters, something like that. Anyway. So, World Wars, uh, about the game. First of all, um, it plays 3 to 5, but I think it's best with 4 or 5. 3 is kind of not enough. I would like like more bidding to be involved, more players to be involved. The 5 is really, really... I like to play it with 5 a lot. Um, 4 is very much fine as well. 3 is not that good in my opinion. Just less players, just not for me. Um, maybe you might be good with that but with three players there's like one auction master and only two bidders and it's not exciting they kind of outbid each other if they want to but it spices up the game but there are more bidders now uh, regarding the gameplay itself i do really like this mechanic of you have your walls and uh, there are the items that you take 
and those items are in the vaults and then you can like based on the card you will reveal some items you will get uh, your the other players will get to peek at some items and such so you kind of know the information and kind of not you maybe know the same information as the others so maybe the different information and so when you bid as well you can sometimes bluff and as an auction master you maybe put a higher bid uh, but um, that's because you want to bluff, you want to players to outbid, you want to make them feel like there's something valuable, but, you know, you just revealed one emerald, but all the other three cards are just junk, you know, and nothing worth it, you know, and um, it's a game about bluff and such, so this, this is the whole concept for me, but also that you have those different worlds with different uh, kind of instructions that spices up the game, that makes the game different each time, um, although item cards, although I would love to have maybe an expansion to, to make even more cards as well. It's not a hard game, but it's all about the player interaction, how you bid, how you, uh, as an auction master, uh, you need to be wise not to uh, give your money away on the first waltz. And then uh, uh, you, as an auction master, of course, you, you want to get more money. You it's Sometimes you take a look at those cards, you really want those cards, but the cool part about this one is sometimes like, what do I need more? Do I need more, more cards? But if I don't have enough money, I can I cannot pay the storage fees. I need to loan money, then I get minus points anyway. So maybe I should rather kind of not bid too much, but I should still encourage players to bid uh, on that vault so I can get more money. And when I get more money, when the other players will put out their vaults, I can bid on those and maybe get something similar or even better. Uh, you have those equip cards that you can spice up the game with where you have those special abilities, they don't give you points, but some of them are kind of cool special abilities, some of them not as exciting, but then you just sell them or, or you, you, you keep them for the points, and so, so that, that's that. And I do like the junk part, sometimes you just get junk, and there's luck in this game, there's randomness in this game, but, but the whole bluff element of um, you bit higher or lower, you kind of encourage people or not, and you gamble as well. For example, you as a player, the auction master puts up uh, the price and then you think, is he bluffing or he, does he really want to have this vault himself? Or what? he tries to just increase the price. Sometimes the other players will increase the price because they know you really want to buy this one. So it all evolves around this kind of a bidding. So the bidding is... is it, it, essential part of this of this game and all those different items and walls and instructions on those are spicing up the game and replayability of this game so definitely this is this is a great game for me i like to play with four and five and i would definitely recommend this game this game will get uh, uh, silver worth a medal uh, as well i do like this game a lot I played with my colleagues, with non-gamers as well, and they understood the game. Maybe at first it was a little bit more difficult to know, like, you, you don't know all the cards. But after they played it, they're like, now we know all the cards, now I would play it, definitely. And one of, one of the, those uh, ladies, she said um, that she would definitely buy this game for herself. And even though she's not a gamer, she haven't played the game besides the ones that I showed them. So... An accessible game as well, in my opinion, although at first it might be more difficult, but you get through that, you get through first game, and the second game will be much more streamlined, much more better. So, that's World Wars, definitely recommend it, and we see you another time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye, folks. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.